G'day YouTube, Orbals on a lot here. Last night we had some rain. 15 and a half millimetres of rain. Onto the roof of the hut. And at uh, 48 litres per millimetre runoff to rainfall ratio, something like 750 litres. cascaded into the top bag which is now 54 centimeters deep in water 5940 liters at 110 liters to the centimeter more or less roughly broadly speaking and you're really only supposed to put 6300 liters in there so with more rain forecast over the weekend low clouds on the horizon, dark clouds upwind. The question is whether 360 litres is enough space in that boy wall. And the one behind it is equally full. So now strikes me as a good time to transfer about four and a half centimetres or 500 litres of water across to the repaired bag on the new pad. The major repair isn't perfectly watertight. It's seeping a bit, but the theory is that as more water goes into the bag, there will be more pressure from the water pushing the patch onto the sutured bag wall and perhaps the more water is in the pool, then the better the repair will hold. So that means using the three horsepower water pump and the firefighting hose, which will be good practice at getting to know the pump. I might even get to be able to measure its fuel consumption and its flow rate, because both are a function of what's going on with the nozzle which gives you a variable pressure with four click settings as well as a variable stream narrowest possible stream gives you your maximum distance with the highest possible pressure but you only get around about 35 liters per minute what i want to do today is run it about a quarter of a turn opened up so instead of a narrow stream i get a slightly divergent flow and also back off the pressure one click and make it easier for the pump to push the water out through the nozzle and then if i run the pump for 10 minutes i can measure the depth of that pool and see how it's come down from 54 centimeters measure the depth of that pool and see how it's come up from 11.5 centimeters and then refill the tank and see how much fuel it took to do it and that should tell me how much time and how much fuel it's going to take to put about half of one of those boy walls, aka 3,000 litres or three tonnes of water, out across the half an acre, which I propose to try to defend from any approaching fire. Every thousand litres onto half an acre is the equivalent of half a millimetre of water. So if I can get three tonnes out of there, spread out across all of this, that's one and a half millimetres of rainfall equivalent and that makes this place pretty hard to burn like all water pumps you have to make sure the pump's filled with water as you can see water's coming out of the pump when i undo the plug so it is indeed full of water because i keep it suction hose in one of the tanks and i keep the pump primed ready to go fueled and oiled so in the event you've only got to turn the fuel on turn the ignition on crack the throttle a third and turn the choke on. Notice the sticky tape on the choke placard. Notice how when you stand at the back end of the engine you can read all the other placards, but the choke placard appears to be upside down. As delivered, that placard was reversed so you could read it from this direction. However, that choke is clearly and obviously in the off position. That brings it to the on position, 
and the placard was printed backwards. And the person who uh, assembled the engine didn't know or didn't care. So Muggins here has fixed that one. This tension spring is a second modification. Because when you get this thing going at full throttle, if you turn the hose off at the nozzle, this little pressure mechanism overrides the throttle, backs the engine off and prevents it from blowing up the water pump. But when it does it, it manages to accidentally knock the throttle back a bit. So you lose RPM and you lose water pressure when you do go to use the hose again. So to prevent that, to hold the throttle in its full position, I've just got a tension spring there. So I'll put the camera on a tripod, show the starting procedure and ideally it'll start right up. Okay, quarter past 12. So while the engine's warming up, you flake the hose. Isn't that good? Figure eight, cross flaked hoses, really work well. So ideally this should now be warmed up enough to run at full throttle without the choke. Like so. Now I'll just cycle the hose a bit and do some hosing. You can probably hear the response to the engine. Anyway, I'll keep going with that till 10 minutes and then I'll bring you back later. Okay, I make that nearly 10 minutes. There we go, and it's hammering away. So I'll let that run at idle for a bit just to cool down. 
no new catastrophic leaks. Turn this off. Well, well, well. 46 centimetres and 20 centimetres. So, 8 centimetres. 8 centimetres times 1, 1, 0. 880 litres in 10 minutes times 6 equals. 5,280 litres in one hour, 88 litres per minute, 34 minutes to put out three tonnes. And I will be surprised if that's any more than half a litre of petrol. But we shall see what we shall see. And of course, now it's time to replace the hose on its rack. And the easiest way to do that is just lay it back out flat again. And of course if you need the whole hose you do three runs up here before setting off either to the east or the west or the south or wherever you need to go. It's all pretty kind of simple. There you go. Ready for next time. Okay, so. Two hundred and fifty mils. And we'll see if we can fit another fifty in. Yep, there we go. Three hundred mils every ten liters. Uh, 10 minutes, so 1.8 litres an hour. There's a 1.7 litre tank and you can probably only get 1.5 litres out of it. So after 50 minutes, not only are you going to have to fill the pump up with petrol, but after 50 minutes you're going to find that you're sucking air in the boy wall even if it was full at the time when you started. So, there we go. Now we know we can get 88 litres per minute out onto the clearing. One and a half millimetres of rain on half an acre in half an hour. So it's not such a bad little water pump after all. Once having learned and corrected for its uh, idiosyncrasies, we learned how to operate the choke and let it warm up before you ask it to give you full power and full output. And for my next trick, I will take off the old pale torn, ripped, tattered, battered ultraviolet cover from the number two pool, and briefly make it as naked as the number one pool, and then I will fit the two new ultraviolet covers which arrived this week from Clark Rubber in Dubbo who are located at 18 Cobra Road, Dubbo. They won't have any more of these 12 foot pools in until October, because that's when their summer season stock arrives. The list price, as I understand it, and I could be wrong, $200, $39 for an ultraviolet cover. Allow $50 or $60 for freight, depending on where you are in relation to the store. Effectively, $300 for a brand new 6,300 litre Chinese inflatable swimming pool as a water tank. And if your water carter is anything like my water carter, it'll cost you $130 for 6,000 litres of water to fill the thing up. The pump was listed at $380. To get the suction hose six metres long, I paid $125 for a quote firefighting hose kit. 
the plastic nozzle and the 14 meters of lay flat hose that came with the firefighting hose kit isn't much use with another 25 meters of lay flat that makes a nice spare $347 for a 25 millimeter 36 meter long fire reel hose with a three-way adjustable pistol grip nozzle I make $1,282 for the pump hose and nozzle the tank the ultraviolet cover and the water to put in it which is cheaper than relying on a fire truck Ciao.